It was said that you cannot light off a training motor of an Iowa-class battleship on shore power, and I think we've very effectively shattered that myth. So there's been a lot of questions about how did we do this on the electrical side. Uh, in fact, a number of people have asked uh, if we had brought in a generator, if the utility had enough power. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And the reality is that we did this on shore power and shore power alone. Uh, we had planned to some degree for this back as far as 2013. When we installed the shore power on the ship, we had added up all the potential loads. And one of the questions that we asked at the time was, could in fact a turret be cranked up with the available power that we had planned for. And uh, so we planned for it. 1,600 amps is what we have coming into the facility. Now the motor itself is pretty big. It's the largest motor on the ship. It's 300 horsepower. It draws 355 amps at 450 volts. We're actually running 480 volts here just because the utility provides that. Um, the problem with a large motor like that, and something very common in industry, is that, that the startup load or the inrush current is very, very high. So you could have, as I was taught, five to seven times uh, the actual full load amperage, or FLA, uh, on the motor just from startup. And there's a number of ways to deal with that. And in fact, it's very common in industry. Um, in our case, we have a, an auto transformer starter. It's a motor starter that allows you to start the motor at a lower voltage, at a lower amperage and reduce the startup load, that inrush current, until it gets up to speed. And then it flips over to full voltage and off you go. So we, we did not use anything special, just the shore power we had. Uh, we looked at stripping a little bit of energy off of the ship, but frankly it didn't even make the lights flicker.